Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Ultima 9 Ascension. In our last video, the Avatar explored the elemental planes of fire and earth, and now it's time to explore the elemental plane of water, which we should be able to reach through a portal in the water maze here. Also, that fire sound that I said would probably disappear upon my reloading of the game has disappeared. Cool. Let's find that portal. Oh, well, there it is. And we've got combat music from the mean fishy stuck in the wall. We'll just ignore that. Interesting place. I must say, of the elemental planes, this is my favorite. I like stormy weather, and I like swimming. I also like the color blue, so this works out quite well for me. Uh, well, we seem to be in a bit of a situation because um, I don't see how we're going to reach that from here. We'd never make that jump, but we can probably hop along those. We would just need to find a way to reach one of them. And that's probably it right there, so let's jump in the water. Affirmative. Now we'll just traverse these strategically placed rock formations. Here we are. We could check the ones on this side before continuing, though. I don't think there's anything here, but... And we can make this jump because it's ridiculous. Yeah. And that's where we started. Okay, heading back. Didn't find anything. That is predictable, but uh, no worries. Doesn't have to look. Cool. Oh, speaking of cool, there's an ice hound. I don't know why I just put my sword away. Situation handled. And there's a crab, too. A dead crab who was carrying plate leggings. Sure. It's a very well-armored crab. And we've got a small pool here. Ooh, there are mean fishies in there. There are mean fishies in there. No more mean fishies in there. That's good. Uh, that looks like a regular school of fish. <laughs> About as regular as a school of fish that flops around like cardboard can be. I don't think there's any reason to jump down into that though, so let's continue. There's another crab. Let's deal with that. Poke, poke. It is dead. We've got another body of water here. I'm sure we'll see more of it as we look around. These pools are really nice, but I have to wonder... Why aren't they overflowing? Maybe there's some massive underground plumbing network that connects everything and keeps the plane running smoothly. I don't know. Here's some bigger pools. 
Alright. It is maybe a little strange that the underwater environmental noise is constantly playing here, even though we're clearly not underwater. I hear an ice hound. Oh, there it is. No, you will not freeze the avatar. That's the avatar's trick now. Ooh, ooh. There's a sea serpent. Hmm. We'll address that later. Right now, we've another ice hound around the corner. Let's take care of that. Dead. And there's that sea serpent. But we've also got, uh, looks like a mana pool. You can tell with the, the pink sparklies. The water dances on your lips. Indeed, that is a mana pool. Good to know that that's there in case we need it. Which we don't. Not right now, anyway. Looks like the sea serpent can't reach this area. So that's good. I have a feeling we're going to have to deal with it sooner or later, though. I think now is later. Yeah, okay. Oh, and there's an ice hound back here, too. That's strange. Oh, that one got us. Too slow. Well, you're dead anyway, so... I see a couple potions over there. A red and orange. Oh! And you! You are frozen! And targeted! And dead! And that was the champion of the elemental plane of water, because killing it has resulted in uh, a teleporter popping up. Figure that out soon enough. I'm gonna drink the orange potion. Because we used a little bit of mana doing the Palpatine thing. I know there's a mana pool back there, but we just don't need it. It's okay. I don't think there's anything in this body of water. At least not anymore. So we'll just head down this way. Here's the pool where we found those two mean fishies and ended them. And this is sort of the mirror of the other side. Once again, nothing to see down there, unfortunately, so we're not going to explore it. And here's where we killed that crab and that first ice hound. And there's the teleporter back to the abyss. Yeah, we're done here, so let's go. And the flame sound is inexplicably back. But the ice spears are gone. That's interesting. That says to me that there is nothing stopping the Avatar from jumping into this pit now, which of course we want to do. I mean, it's a pit. Who wouldn't want to jump down into this? And get hurt while sta- We're taking damage for this. Bleeding out the side quite profusely. That's, that's no good. Weird. Alright, let's go. Um... 
See, now, unlike when we were in the Abyss's entry area, and we jumped uh, where all those statues were firing their ether rays or whatever, and, you know, you could look, you landed in the shaft, and you could look up, and you could see, oh, hey, that's probably where I came from. That This makes sense. But this time, totally disjointed. Well, you know, just, just throw the avatar onto a ledge deeper in the abyss. No big deal. How'd we even get here? <sighs> Whatever. Time to look around. This is nice. Not quite as bad as the elemental plane of fire, but still not really loving it. Uh, this guy had a bad day. He is dead. Hmm. This guy is also dead with his broadsword. And I hear a hellhound. Okay, that's not the way down. This is. Hmm. Oh, I see you. I see you. Charge! Oh, no. What did I get stuck on there? Anyway. As I was saying... You had a glass sword. Had a glass sword, anyway. And you had a two-handed axe. I wonder if they... went at each other and... Well, maybe this guy was involved, too. And his nine arrows. Thank you. A novice bow. This is a broken glass sword, though. I have to wonder who, uh... Who received it. Probably this fella. Killed with a glass sword. That is a nasty way to go. It breaks off in ya. Oh, well. Ooh, and over here, 245 coins. That we can't take. Anyway... And you had a Warhammer and a Wormguard Helm. That's interesting. Was this a Wormguard who just didn't like to wear other armor? Or was he some sort of poor soul thrown into the Abyss and looted a Wormguard Helm? I don't know. I don't know. And there's a jump scare for you. Just in case you needed one. Thanks, guys. Totally appreciate it. I see some lights down there. Hmm, starting to be able to make out a bridge over what appears to be lava, so that's nice. Ah! And here is a pincushion. Cool. I guess the arrow fella up there took this guy down. As one does. I think we want to get to that bridge, and I think this is the way to do it. So shortly, we shall see what awaits the Avatar on the other side. Lord British, what are you doing? What does it look like, Avatar? The old man has accepted my challenge, and it's going to be the death of him. I should have had you executed low these many years ago, Blackthorn. I suppose that I'll have to do it now. No, my lord. I am your Avatar. Let me fight this vermin. No, Avatar. I have sat by and allowed you to fight my battles for far too long. It was my responsibility to rid Britannia of this menace following the destruction of the Shadow Lords. It was a job that I apparently left unfinished. Now I must finish that job. No, my lord, wait! No, Avatar, I'll not have you interfere! You 
You're looking weak, old man. I may yet surprise you. I may be old and gray, but on my worst day, I can best ten of you. Can't you just die? <laughs> there. Tis finally done. That was an epic smackdown, if ever I've seen one. Way to go, Lord British. Totally trounced Blackthorn. And it's nice to see him get up off his butt and do something for once, instead of just farting around in the castle like he's done for most of the game, so let's say as much. That was quite a display, my lord. I must say I am very impressed. Yes. Well, I can assure you that I was never in any danger from that worm. There is a reason why I had to fight him, Avatar. You see, we... No. I have depended on you for far too long, Avatar. When first I created the quest to find an Avatar, I wanted the person who fulfilled the quest to be an example to all the people of Britannia. They were meant to emulate you, do the things that you did. Instead, the people came to depend on you to solve their problems, rather than solving the problems themselves. And I fear that I was the worst offender, my friend. Rather than going forth and encountering the evils that afflicted my own land, I called upon you to do it. But no more. No. The people of Britannia must learn to do things for themselves. We can't depend on one man forever. Hmm, well... Based on... The things we're hearing about the Avatar and the Guardian at this point, I'm inclined to agree. Perhaps you are right, my lord. I have been given the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. I am right. Now listen. There is still much to be done that unfortunately only you can do. You must travel into the ethereal void to cleanse the Shrine of Spirituality. However, the moons have so corrupted the moon gates that you cannot use them to travel to the void. I will send you into the void, but you must first consult the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. It contains the knowledge that you will need. Take the Codex to the Isle of the Avatar and place it upon the altar. Next, place the red and blue lenses on the appropriate pillar. Only then will you be able to consult the Codex. Once you have consulted the Codex, come back to my castle in Britain and I will send you into the Void. You must get the Glyph of Spirituality before I can teleport you out, for we cannot return. Farewell, my friend. Wow. Well, before we continue, let's see what the Avatar scribbled about that. I need to go into the ethereal void to cleanse the Shrine of Spirituality, but I've been told that I can't get there through the Moon Gates. Lord British will send me there, but first I need to consult the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. To do this, I need to take the Codex to the Isle of the Avatar, place it on the altar, then place the red and blue lenses on the proper pillars. Once finished, I should come back to LB's castle. Before I go to the void though, I need to get the Glyph of Spirituality, since I can't come back for it. That's not entirely true. You can come back to the Abyss. You just won't be able to get out again because Lord British will be gone the next time you enter. So yeah, Blackthorn is dead. 
How about that? Did his death scream sound a little odd to you? Because it sounded a little odd to me. Not just because it was very clearly not Blackthorn's voice actor, but also because I recognize the sample. When I was about 10, so this was back in Windows 3.1 days, uh, a friend of mine gave me this software called Click and Play. It was a game creation studio, so it came with animations, backdrops, MIDI files for music, and a bunch of WAV files for various sound effects. And you could place things all over the screen and write logic, and you could make some pretty interesting stuff. So I'm this little 10-year-old making these silly games and everything. It was a lot of fun. But yeah, one of the sound effects included in that massive library was that very scream. So I recognized it instantly, and it kind of threw me off a little bit. And it's like, what is that doing in this game? <laughs> but now that we're here, I gotta say, I am so unimpressed with how Ultima 9 handled the Blackthorn character. At the end of Ultima 5, we could see that he was really repentant about how he behaved while he was possessed by the Shadow Lords. And in Ultima 7 Part 2, Serpent Isle, there's a book that says he showed up there and stayed with the Zenkin monks for a while and became quite a humble person, apparently. But then there's this. I guess they needed an easily recognizable and nostalgic bad guy, and since Batlin's dead because the Guardian didn't protect him at a crucial moment, hey, we'll use Blackthorn. And it's funny because Morgana said that Blackthorn would die alone, defeated by a man he betrayed, and be scorned by his only ally. Yeah, the Guardian does not take care of his people. Not a bit. Way to go, British. Let's talk to him again. Do you have the glyph? No, I don't. Avatar, you must get the glyph before we can leave. Fine. Before we do that, let's throw the codex into the quest item bag. In fact, let's read it. Yeah, that's... That's not gonna happen. That's definitely not gonna happen. That is garbage. And here is the column for the abyss. We found it. And there's the glyph of spirituality. I have found the glyph of spirituality. Well done, Avatar. Let's get out of here. Do you have the glyph? Yes, I do. Good. I will teleport you out. Meet me at the castle. Thanks, LB. And we can see that uh, everything that we need to enter the abyss is still here. I guess we've just got uh, Pyros on command at this point. Our own personal titan of fire who can just drag us down into the abyss as needed. Cool. Let's see. Well, there's Raven's ship. And we know where the codex is housed. So let's head to it. As you'll recall, it was up this way. Just around that large rock formation. I'm turned around. There, 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 okay. And we're back. We're back to do codex stuff. Cool. 
Well, if, uh, if you remember Ultima 6, the way this works is the blue lens goes here, and the red lens, which is supposed to be purple, goes here, because they were meant to focus the flames of infinity and singularity, respectively. That was the layout in Ultima 6. I don't know if these are meant to be those flames. We can ignite them. Probably not a good sign that they appear to have been extinguished. Ugh, these horrible statues. There we go. And now we'll place the codex. And let's read it. It's still garbage. You know why? Because Ultima 9 is garbage. Those braziers back there, they are not the flames of infinity and singularity like they're supposed to be. Uh, they're just braziers. Also, I mean, that wouldn't make sense. They should be there and there, but they're not. Uh, and as if that weren't bad enough, the uh, the lenses they're the wrong color they're tiny and they go on the wrong pillars now <laughs> so uh, I'm just very upset because again Ultima 6 near and dear to my heart I hate this yeah see that obviously did something that worked turn. And now we can read the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. How can one half of a thing be removed if it is separated from the other half that forms the whole? Good and evil cannot exist without the other. If one is to be removed, it must join with the other. The barrier of life must be cast before ascension. Place the eight sigils on the eight pillars in the guardian's chamber. Move to the circle in the center of the room there you will be asked for the incantation. Speak the words Sankt Vas Grav in Mani An Corp, and the barrier will rise around the chamber. A gate shall then appear, summoning the other half that makes the whole into the room. The most destructive of all magic must be used to remove the whole from Britannia. Armageddon must be cast, but only after the barrier of life is in place, lest all the world be destroyed. To perform this ritual, you must have the eight sigils at hand. Then you must use three pieces of the dimensional portal. When you are asked for the incantation, speak the words correctly. They are, Vaskal on Mami in Corp Her Time. And I'm just gonna nitpick real quick. Uh, why is the word three spelled out there, the word eight spelled out there, and yet eight is a number there, and not there. It's, it's spelled out again right there. What is this? The Codex of Ultimate Wisdom is dumb, but yeah, what we've just read is how to end the game. And the Guardian and the Avatar. Let's see what the Avatar scribbled about that. According to the Codex, I need to cast the Barrier of Life 
by placing the eight sigils on the eight pillars in the guardian's chamber, then move into the center of the circle. The incantation is Sankt Vas Grav in Mani on Corp. To defeat the evil, Armageddon must be cast, but only after the barrier of life is in place. To perform this ritual, I need to have the eight sigils at hand and three pieces of the dimensional portal. The incantation is Vas Kal on Mani in Corp. Her time. Well, sounds pretty serious. Can we take the codex? Yes. Can we read the codex? Yes. Okay. Well, then I think we'll just, uh, you know, just, uh, oh, I can't take the lenses back. The lenses are stuck, but I can take the codex, which is arguably more important of an artifact, so uh, I'd say we're good. I'd say we're, we're good. No big deal. Whew, well, yeah, that's some pretty heavy stuff. Um, we're going to be casting Armageddon on ourself and the Guardian to finally put an end to all this nonsense. You know, you can cast Armageddon in previous installments of the series. And then there's also its weird cousin, Imbalance. That one's only in Ultima 7 Part 2 Serpent Isle. So yeah, you can do that for funsies, but... This is the real deal. This is a thing that is meant to happen, and uh, it, it serves a real purpose. Well, let's talk to Raven about all this uh, in the next video. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.